Tony, give me part of that. <laughs> Notice that Tony is wearing my hair is blowing in the breeze, Michael Crawford. I don't Crawford, know what happened. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose you're right about that, actually, aren't you? I, 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 yes. Wanted to... Can we I, get a transcript of what you just said? I, 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 yes. Yes. It would be a short transcript. Did you get up earlier this morning? A little more uh, it's not that I more. got up earlier this morning. I got up and I just did what I had to do quickly and got out of the house instead mm -hmm. of kibitzing around as oh, I you normally got here, do. Oh, got here early with yes. a lot of energy. Lots of energy. Lot of energy here today. Lots of stuff Enormous on the show energy. today. But I didn't get much sleep last night. Why? I kept dreaming about Michael Crawford. And I... Can I ask you what the Donald I, thought of this during the evening? He's in Pittsburgh, so he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're on such an up note here. I want to mention the one downer note. Uh, Oral Hershiser. Oh, did you have to... Well, come on. Some, if you can call sports reality, must intrude upon what we're doing yeah, here this just, morning. It's, it's and I thought that what he said was so true to who Oral is. The same God who let me win all those games is... Is the one behind this? And are you smiling at Michael Crawford? I'm smiling at Michael. I'm talking Crawford. about Oral and his relationship to God, I, and you're smiling at Michael Crawford. I, uh, but I thought what he said was was wonderful and kind of puts things in perspective. He is exactly the kind of person that you think he is. He's yes. a very warm, friendly, right. caring, giving, concerned person. And, wonderful kind of guy. And I found it interesting that he did say perhaps the fact that there was a shortened spring training season mm -hmm. is, is why he had problems with his arm. And mm -hmm. oh, why well, he has problems oh, and, and terrible. Uh, and Howell's having problems, and Kirk Gibson's having problems. It's going to be a long season this year, folks. Okay, let's get to it. I know why you're here. On the program today, first of all, we have a wonderful story of how the fight against gangs got some big help from the big spin. A man who never met a sand trap he couldn't hit. <laughs> the world's funniest, tiniest golfer, Dorf, will be here. And a couple of Emmy winners, two wonderful actors who start together in The Waltons, Richard Thomas and Michael Lerner, together again. Okay. But first. First, ladies and gentlemen, he's been doing this little play here in town called <laughs> little The play. Phantom of the Opera Sunday is his last performance. And of course, he has been part of one of the most generous gestures that I've ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Michael Crawford. Yeah! Are you wow. crying, ma'am? No. They're holding, I don't know, you're going to get a shot. They were holding signs up in the audience, and a word was left out because it said, We, nothing, Michael. What was that? We, did somebody forget? Oh, love. I see you forgot. Oh, the heart. Show them again, prove it to you. We, no, now we, love you, Michael. And we'll miss you. Miss, oh, oh, they have a whole, I, a whole a, dialogue going on It's a novella, it is not just signs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. First of all, before we say anything else, uh, this business with the auctioning of the tickets to your final performance, your tickets, is incredible. Everybody in town is talking about the fact that the highest bid was $27,500 yeah. for your house seats. The people, the three <laughs> highest bidders who got the three sets of tickets will be here later. You'll get to right. give them their tickets. What do you think of this, huh? Uh, hey, I'm, I've taken that extra insurance to be here on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Can you imagine if anything happens to me oh. now? Oh, no. oh, oh don't oh. even. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the manager who gets to announce, Michael Parker, and Tim Conway is doing Phantom of the Opera. Yes. Tim Conway today. Yes. Oh, no. I'm doing, yeah, doing a shortened version. <laughs> <laughs> Dorf as the Phantom. <laughs> Little humor there. Little humor. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Oh. Does it make you want to stay longer? Oh, of course it does. I mean, I've, I've wanted to stay longer anyway. Mm -hmm. you know? Can't. Why not? I, I'm just. I'm. Look at my eyes. I'm, You're tired. I'm tired. I, I'm, I'm tired, and my my voice will will start to really be damaged if I if I stay on. So you you have to rest mm -hmm. for quite a period of time. So I've got to be quiet for about six weeks. My friends will be delighted, <laughs> <laughs> especially my daughters. <laughs> Now they're here visiting for this last performance and for all the festivities. My youngest, or one of them yes. is. Yeah. Yeah. How old is she? She's 21. 
You have, what, your youngest is 21? Yes. But you're just... She's actually 22, but I lie. Oh. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> and, and how old is your oldest? She's 24. <laughs> well, you started quickly. Well, yes. Well, well yes. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. And what does she think when she sees all of the, the, the clamoring going on about you and your last performance, but more specifically, you and your role? I know it happened in London. I know you were well recognized there. But is she surprised by what's going on here now still? I think she's as excited as I am about it. I mean, we were both, the other day when the, when the bids were coming in, we were both, we both looked at each other and said, look, and the hair was standing up on our lips. arms. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and at the end, we were both crying because you, you, you're, you should never cease to be amazed by good things. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's lovely to... Uh, it's, it's, and uh, makes, uh, well, makes for a better world. Yeah, it's starting to stand up again. Yeah, it? I know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, for, if there's anybody out there who doesn't know what we're talking about, mm -hmm. very, very quickly again, because this didn't make any sense, very quickly, uh, it was mentioned here that the scalpers were asking for $1,500 for a pair of tickets to Michael's last performance on Sunday before Robert Guillaume takes over as Phantom of the Opera. And we mentioned it here, you, for some reason, because you have nothing to do in the mornings, right. would watch our watch show. Us. Right? <laughs> and you, you called over and you said, you know, I have a, my house seats, maybe we could get $1,500 and we could uh, give it to a charity. And then Andrew Lloyd Webber and Cameron McIntosh gave their seats as well. So uh, we, we had, it was a collective, because I, I couldn't get that amount of seats, so with their help as well. Do these people know they're getting Webber's and McIntosh's tickets? They do, they do now. Well, I don't know that. <laughs> Wait a minute, now. let's redo the bidding. We'll start <laughs> over again. And, and it just, I know you were hoping for I, oh, no, no. I was 000? hoping uh, close to 10. I, I was hoping we could nudge up to 10. Yeah. But, my gosh, look what happened. I thought five. Yeah, I, I know. I thought five. Mm -hmm. And uh, that you were sort of sweating on. Well, we got five. 27,005. Yeah, oh, right. Wow. We got five yeah. times that, that actually, just, with one just, bid. Just for two of the tickets. I just wonder what it does for you. And again, uh, we talked about this last time you were here. You now are known as this incredibly romantic figure of serious musical drama on stage. You've had a lifetime of being one of the funniest guys, Funny guys. in yeah. England. Yes. And now suddenly you have touched a chord here that seems to go beyond just, gee, isn't he good? There's something else that's happening. I wonder if you've thought about that or reflected on it at all? No, whenever I've played characters that are amusing, they've always been very serious characters to me. Um, comedy, the character can be very, very sad. Uh, people here won't have seen my series in England. It, it's called Some Mothers Do Have Them. And it's a very klutzy kind of person mm -hmm. who, who it, it would be here, it would be called uh, He Should Be Your Son. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's really, you don't want him. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but that's sad well, in it itself, mm -hmm. that you shouldn't want your own son is sad. So in the realistic way, that's how you play comedy. And the greatest comedy, which one strives for, one never achieves, but like Buster Keaton, like Harold Lloyd, it's tragedy. So the, 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 the journey from the tragedy to the drama of playing um, uh, comedy to drama, playing Phantom, is really not that, that far apart, except that you don't get the laughs, of course, and uh, you have to avoid them at all costs. I mean, <laughs> I, the smooth way that, uh, I mean, this, this excerpt that has been shown now, 3,000 times, yes. <laughs> and the whole of, whole of Los Angeles joins in and goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tawny, Tawny, had, Tawny had it put into her contract that I guess. we have to run it on the show Constantly. every day. Whether we're talking about it or not, it just comes up. You know? <laughs> Dale Christian says to me, when, my leading lady, she says, you know that piece at the end, she she's had a problem with something I was doing, and I said, oh, where do you mean? She said, you know, when you said, this place is all a murder. <laughs> And I said, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and you can lighten the load there. But the other night at the, at the organ, I was playing the organ, and I, Dale started to sing, and I had to sneeze. I had to sneeze. Oh. My nose had I'd got very oh. emotional at the end of Music of the Night. And again, it's, it, Crawford comes through the phantom as the lights go out, and you hear the audience applaud, and sometimes they shout, boy. I mean, it makes me go... <laughs> <laughs> It makes it's us a go wonderful like that too. feeling to hear an audience <laughs> shout. 
Mm-hmm. Boy, it's what, you've, it's what you've wanted all your life. All yes, your but how career. wonderful is it as the sneeze is coming up? <laughs> and that left me, yes, I... I exactly. Uh, the, 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 it left my um, nasal passages slightly uh, ticklish, and uh, I started to sneeze, so I'm, I'm composing, and, sh- and uh, the attention must be on Dale. And I just went... <laughs> and, 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 and two people came around and said, I love that bit, love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> love the new business. That was a good time. Yes. Okay. It was a good Do you t- know what everybody wants to know? Everybody that, that I see who knows that I have met you, they A, think that I'm the luckiest person in the world, and I concur. No, 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 um, no, no, no. B, they want to know, well, well, I happened to tell some people what happened in your dressing room on Friday, how you were going through the, well, we, we wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, let's be fair, because oh. this, this sounds like a miniseries. <laughs> We have to take a break to give full time to what happened in the dressing room and when Tawny was there and also to meet the people who got the tickets. We have them here and we'll be meeting them. We'll be back with that and more in just a moment. Thank you. Warning. The activities you are about. So there they were, the dressing room of the Phantom of the Opera, Tawny Little and Michael Crawford, one representing the United States, the other England, coming together, and what happened? Well, we were talking about how moving and sexy and sensual and, and passionate and all of those things that, that, that the Phantom is because of you. Your interpretation. Remember, and you said you started to get into how you found the character, and you started to use your hands. Like, well, it comes from in here, the despair, and it comes out. And, with, and when you move your hand out like this, the energy has. To, do you remember? Yeah. Well, everybody that I've said that to just gets in like Twitter painting because they find it so incredible that you have all of that you know, passion I had and sensuality. A lot of Twitter patient going on around here. That explains from, it. Yes. No, from inside you, and that makes. You also said it. You have Let to be, my Michael say if he's that passionate. My Michael, I used to be your Steve. I didn't what is say it? my Michael. I yes, you let, did. Let Michael say. I mean, <laughs> d- t- about the passion and the sensuality inside you, because that's what the women who are your fans want to know. Well, it, I mean, it started as a kind of light-hearted thing where Hal Prince said, "I want it to be sexual and sensual," and I said, "Well." Uh, you know, I'll go and read about it. And, <laughs> and you, you can't. It's, 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 it's like saying, what, what do you find sensual in looking at um, someone that appeals to you? Um, and uh, if, if, if it's a, a, a woman in a magazine sort of pouting and no clothes on, or is it somebody that, that is clothed and, and just has an appeal about them and has some feeling about them? And usually I find that that comes from inside the person. And that's what I wanted, that's where I wanted it to come through for my interpretation. Now, I, sure, he's a violent man, but I think that violence must come from something that is, that is brought about by totally, it should be, it's us that has created that violence. I'm not, this, this can be very bad psychology, really, to, to no, explain violence. No, but it's not, violence, not, not but just the evil in this person. No, it's, it's not. I find him a wonderful man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so from inside that you uh, as you walk, it's got to come from deep and 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 i working this out with Gillian Lynn the choreographer whenever you make a move you don't you don't say um, either it's turn your face away or or come to me this this mustn't be weak it's got to it's as i do it everything here tightens up and everything in my body tightens up so that the the strength, it's like isometrics when you... I mean, you body was tightening up just then, <laughs> <laughs> But you, 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 when you do that, the, the veins stand up on your arm and you feel it in your feet. You feel the power grounding you so that every move is very, very heavy and... And you're met. there every time. Yes, it's yes. It's not something where you mechanically get it down and then you can rely on the right. technique. You're no. there. Oh, yes. Yes, you have to. It's, it's a dance. It's movement. It's dance movement so that as you get out the boat with her, you don't get out looking down. You must never look. And, of course, that can, can create moments where you can, ha- can have an accident. I mean, lo- I think it was yesterday afternoon on the matinee. I know I teetered slightly coming down the steps from the crucifix at the top. And the audience's eye will immediately be drawn to that. So you're going to make mistakes. 
but you've got to be you've got to be brave enough to make those mistakes. What about the not being overt, the not touching in obvious ways that one might imagine in the sensual relationship? No, because I don't think that is as sensual. I don't think it is to touch someone and to think. I think to 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 tease is yes it just shows what's inside you what you want what you desire not what you can have and what you're going to get but it is it's a it's a it's a little... somebody have a cigarette <laughs> <laughs> but that that then you share that with everyone mm -hmm. so it's not something you're doing you're sharing that and you're bringing people along to that and take them along that journey with you. Michael, I, this is a fairly obvious question and, and uh, one you're probably asked a lot. This has been such an incredible personal, emotional, theatrical experience for you. Not just a job. What can you do next? To top this. What do you do next? Oh, uh, I can't think about that. Uh, whatever, I said, said the other day a story. My, my feet have always been fairly planted fairly firmly on the ground because you fail a lot of times things don't always work and this is one of those wonderful things that have worked and I, I said a story when I was here with Dolly I, 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 I was one of the three names in that film and no one ever knew who I was mm -hmm. it was Barbara Streisand and Walter Matthau and, and the kid and guy and you were the kid kid guy yes, yes. With yeah. the sort of pipe cleaner yeah. legs I think we have, do we have and, a shot uh, of that we may no I it. hope not I hope we do do we have a shot no. of Dolly no and uh, <laughs> And uh, and then then when I when I used to go in every day, I'd go in in my outfit because it was lazy. I'd go home and then come in in my outfit, and the guy at the door would always say, uh, "Name?" So I'd say Crawford on Dolly, and he'd say, "Wait a minute, yeah, I haven't got you down here." So I said, "Well, I'm in it." I said, "I'm in the that's why I'm dressed like this." I said, yeah. I said oh, "Hold on, I got you here." He said, "No, no, no, you've gone in already." <laughs> so I said, right, well, I'll go home, and I think that's how it went. Then I come back here now, and I went down with my daughter to the set of Hello, Dolly, yet one more time, just to have a look, 20 years later. And uh, I went up to the gate, and I said, uh, we've got to take a photo in front of the set. And the, I said, hey, no parking there. So I said, uh, I, I said I'm Michael Crawford, I'm in Phantom of the Opera, just with my daughter. I'd like to say, yeah, and I'm Cary Grant, get out of here. <laughs> Now, we did, we did show a still. We have one other still we want to show just before we go on. This is from the movie that made a lot of us a fan of yours called The Knack, which I realized, Michael, with I shocked, it was 24 years ago, yes. 23 years ago. It's the same jacket. Actually, you look the same. <laughs> you look absolutely the same. I hate throwing things away. <laughs> we want you now uh, to meet the people who were generous enough to bid for two uh, tickets, each of them, for two excellent charities that were represented in your gener generosity, one of them being Equity Against AIDS and the other, Para Los Niños. So first of all, we want to bring out Gail Frankel and uh, Jane Ramundo. Would you come out okay. and out, please? Hello, Jane. Uh, oh, thank you. Very, very much. Now, here, hold on to these, yes. Now, Larry and Suzanne Klein with Katie and Elizabeth, and they did twenty-one thousand dollars. These folks. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. Can you all kind of back up over here like this, sweetheart? Can you come over here? Thank you very much. And the top bidder, and this is a young woman who's going to have the time of her life on Sunday. The bid for two tickets to see Michael in his last performance, Phantom of the Opera, $27,500. Here is Emily Willard. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's brilliant. Uh, how are you? Well, you better be good but, Sunday, yeah, huh? Yeah, you <laughs> Will you marry me? Yeah. <laughs> 27,000. <000. laughs> uh, oh, by the way, in case tickets. you folks want some tickets, here they are. Yeah. Small detail about that, right. yeah. Here you go. Well, look at the earrings that Emily has on, Michael. <laughs> now, you know because something? Before you go, hats. Michael, there's something we want to give to you. And this is a small token of appreciation of not only us on AM Los Angeles, 
but everybody for all the joy that you have brought to LA and your generosity. Please take this as a token of our esteem and our love. And uh, one other thing. Oh my! Every time I come, I get a coat. <laughs> And we do love you. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Crawford. Thank you so much. Thank you.